Evolution that or Hardcore 2.0 85 coming your way. Today's going to be a very important one. We're going to talk about dangers of high estrogen E2 on cycles, complements of Europharma. So we're going to go over several different things. We're talking about what is estrogen, why it's important with men, how to understand blood work when you're taking a look at your blood work, why estrogen can go up on a cycle. We're going to talk about estrogen side, eff side effects to watch out for. We're going to talk about Europharmacy's options with anti-estrogens and the quality of their other gear. So estrogen, look, it's it's important that we have estrogen, but here's the problem. On cycle, some of these anabolic steroids that we use, they can either cause estrogen to go up to skyrocketed levels, which can cause a myriad of side effects, and they also can cause them to go down too much, which can also cause side effects. But the true danger is when they skyrocket. Going down, you're going to deal with certain things that are manageable. Maybe you'll have a little bit of mood, depression issues, dry joints, stuff like that. Nothing major. But going up, we've got some major side effects that can happen. So it's always important when you're on cycle to have your bases covered because you don't want the estrogen to go up. So estrogen, look, the definition of it, it's a category of sex hormone responsible for development and regulation of the female reproductive system and secondary sex characteristics. So of course, it's known as a female hormone, but males, we need it as well. And when you're trying to build muscle, if your estrogen levels are too low, you're gonna have issues. If they're too high, you're gonna have even more issues. So estrogens, they're, they're synthesized in all vertebrates and even some insects. So in the animal world and mother nature gifted Many, many creatures out there with estrogen for a reason. Um, so, and, and scientists, when they started to isolate estrogen, they were using it in things like medications, menopausal hormone therapy, hormone birth control, feminizing hormone therapy. Um, it's uh, it's uh, non-binary people, all kinds of reasons in the medical world that they use estrogen. And in the in the environment, we even see estrogens, mobster. They're known as xenoestrogens or xenoestrogens. And they can be, um, you know, it could be found in a wide range of endocrine disrupting compounds, EDCs. And these can cause health issues and yes. reproductive dysfunction in both wildlife and humans. We, we have this stuff in our water. We have this stuff in our dirt. We have this stuff all over the place in our foods. And it can cause problems with us as well. So it's a very important topic. And, you know, we're going to make it as exciting as possible on this podcast. And we're going we're to tell you, uh, kind of teach you what to look for when you're worried about estrogen. Even if you've been doing this a long time, it's still important to know this stuff and understand how estrogen can affect you in, in, in males. Um, so... Go ahead, mobster. Why don't you? Um... Yeah. So, so one of the facts that I've memorized some years ago, guys, was uh, and and I'll, I'll relate to why, as Steve said earlier on, it is in men and is in women. So let me start with that first. So there's an idea, especially when you come new to PEDs, and you go, okay, and especially when you're listening, if you just listen to the title, the dangers of estrogen, in 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 this podcast. And that's the only thing that catches your your eye, your ear. Then, then the idea becomes, oh, well, if that's the case, if it's a danger of having estrogen, then perhaps I should crush it. Perhaps I should kill it. And that's sometimes, not as often as it used to be, Steve, a topic that we've seen come up on on the forums. And we say, no, actually, you do need a little bit. You do need a little bit. So here's the ratio. So here's the bit I memorized. So uh, men and women both have uh, testosterone and both have estrogen. And the idea that men don't need it is 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 wrong. And basically, the ratio is thus. It's nine parts testosterone to one part estrogen, I believe. And in women, it's the other way around. It's six parts estrogen to one part testosterone. Proof, if you like, that in a balanced, healthy individual, both will have, male and female, will have some ratio of testosterone and some ratio of estrogen. Now, of course... One of the issues, and we'll touch on this uh, in a little bit more detail as we go through the show, although the focus is going to be the dangers of high and or low estrogen, is that when we take PEDs, and specifically when we take steroids and anabolic steroids in the form of various forms of testosterone, we, of course, are messing with the ratios. Now, naturally, we're looking to cause muscular growth, leanness, 
greater strength and so on and so forth. But the problem is the body doesn't like you to fuck with your hormones. It doesn't like you to, to play around with any number of things that we do, whether it's uh, pe certain peptides, certain especially anabolic and to a lesser degree catabolic steroids and so on and so forth. And so I'll Steve, Steve run explain what, what this means in terms of the HEPTA, the H, HPTA. Uh, but obviously there's this idea, again, that we're going to go in, we're going to take steroids, we're going to build muscle, and that's it. And, and unfortunately, that's not true. It's something that I talked about very briefly with Stephen in, in the pre-show was this, again, uh, and it's slightly disconcerting, and without sounding too preachy, occasionally, um, and some people can get away with it, which doesn't help, where they will have an AI on hand, an aromatized inhibitor, and something that helps you with estrogen on hand, uh, and only wait until there's a problem. Now, there will be probably five, maybe 10% of people that are using forms of testosterone in the form of steroids can get away with this. They tend to be relatively lean, Steve. Uh, and for them, they can they can literally sense when there's an issue, uh, there's an issue with water retention, the nipples are tingling, so on and so forth. The average individual, for me, Steve, really should have an AI in the cycle from, from day one. And again, you need to come on the forums for specific advice about which steroids you're using, your condition, your level of health, any kind of issues you might have had in the past. And these will make the decision in regards to whether you need it or not. For my opinion, Steve, I'm always of the opinion that if I'm running an actual steroid stack or cycle, not, not CRT, but an actual cycle, uh, then I would like to have an AI there and dose it effectively, et cetera, et cetera. Talk about the 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 HEPTA, the H yeah. HPTA, Steve, and what that so, means. Yeah. So let's let's touch on let's move away from females, um, and focus more on males. Okay. Yeah. Because mo yeah, most of you on here, this is the whole idea of this podcast. But let's focus on males. So what happens in the male body when it comes to estrogen in a natural state? What happens is your pituitary glands spit out hormones which stimulate your latex cells and your latex cells, which are your balls, your testes spit out es uh, testosterone. Now then that testosterone converts to estrogen and then it feedbacks into the pituitary gland. It's a big circle. And then this, uh, everything re repeats itself. But when you're using anabolic steroids, different things happen. Your pituitary glands go dormant. They shut down. That's called being suppressed. That call that's called being shut down. And what happens is it's no longer producing those hormones. Instead, the anabolic steroids that you're taking will be providing you the hormone. And depending on which one you're taking and its modification will determine how much estrogen gets converted. Now, here's the thing. If you're using testosterone at a low dose, you're using it at only 100 milligrams, for example. You're only going to have a small amount of estrogen conversion which will basically the body will naturally excrete so you won't have estrogen issues. But let's say you jump the dose, 300, 400, 500 or more. Then what's going to happen is your body's going to get inundated with that aromatization of estrogen because you have more testosterone in your system. Or in the case of Dynabol, it's a testosterone derivative with no modification. So what's going to happen with Dianabol is you'll have a rapid amount of hormones increase, which will convert to estrogen in the body. And those are the main ones that are going to cause the estrogen problems in our system. Now, the other anabolic steroids, they have tweaks. The, the chemists who developed them tweaked them a little bit. And many times over the years, they realized this phenomenon. So you know what they did? They were smart. So they tweaked that testosterone or they, create, or they took that dihydrotestosterone, that DHT molecule, and tweaked it to make a different anabolic steroid that doesn't aromatize into estrogen. So if you're using any of those, the DHT class of steroids, or even testosterone derivatives like equipoise, which, or, or decadurabolin, which, which is an anderlone, which do have some aromatization, but it's such a small amount that you don't have to worry about estrogen in most cases. But if you're using testosterone plus d together, you can have a rapid increase in estrogen. I've done it before. And basically, I look like a bloated fish on that stack. So you have this rapid amount of aromatization. Now, back in the day, in Mobster's Day, 
they didn't have access to anti-estrogen. So they had no way to control this. So that's why in those days, you rarely found someone using testosterone. You know what I'm saying? So so they knew that. So they would use things like Primo, Proviron. They'd use yeah. Deca, which aromatizes far less than testosterone, about a fifth as much. And they use some Debo, but just like a little bit every day, just enough to give them a little kick. But they weren't stupid enough to use tons of testosterone and tons of Debo together. But now we do have access to anti-estrogens and, and, and brands like Euro Pharmacies will bring those to you. We're going to get into which ones they have and how to use them a little later in the show. But I think that pretty much sums it up, Mobster. So the bottom line is when you're using these, you know, some of these anabolic steroids and they convert into testo into estrogen in your body, it's going to cause your estrogen to rise and it's not going to be out of your system. Your system's not going to get rid of it fast enough in, in these cases when you're using them at high, high amounts. So we have to use, you have to use some sort of either aromatase inhibitor or anti-estrogen to control the estrogen on cycle. Just, just as an aside, just as an aside, guys, and to echo something that Steve said, when I first started paying interest into the idea of using steroids, which would be roughly 40 years ago, I don't recall seeing anything other than uh, tamoxifen, Novodex. That's it. I don't remember seeing anything else available, listed, offered, whatever you like. So Steve is entirely correct as to the availability and what we used back in the day. Again, doses have changed. The, the, the idea of crazy dosages, uh, the idea of all kinds of people in bigger sections of society and the obesity crisis being part of that as well uh, was very much not on the table. And I've still got, I believe here, Steve, two books from that time just prior to my use, which would be 37 something years ago, or was age 37, sorry. So just to give you an idea of how that was. And as Steve said, availability of products that we can use now, the advice that we can get, podcasts giving out this kind of information is a lot better than it was back then, Steve. Yeah, let's move on to the next subject. All right, so I think we covered a good amount of the science. So let's get into specific estrogen side effects to watch out for on a cycle. So Mobster, um, you know, I had a client come to me recently and I told them, they're like, well, I want to use more sustenon on my side. I want to use 400, 500 milligrams. And I said, you know, you're going to run the risk of getting estrogen related side effects. And if that happens, you're going to have to start increasing the amount of AI that you're using so that you take care of that yeah. estrogen. And then his, yeah. his question to me was, how do I know if my estrogen is going up? So obviously the number one way to know is to simply get blood work done. So yes. blood work is very important. And when you're getting blood work done, um, there's different, you know, numbers, uh, maybe mobster, you can touch on Britain, but in America, um, what you want to look for in a male is somewhere between 12 and maybe 42 picograms per milliliter PG slash ML. And that would be a normal range. Once that number goes above that, now you're starting to open yourself up to estrogen issues. And some people will tolerate them better. You could have your numbers in the fifties or sixties and be perfectly fine. Someone else could be just barely into the 40s and starting to have estrogen side effects. So those are yeah. what you want to look for. You can get the blood work done, but we're going to go through a list of side effects that could happen on cycle from high estrogen and kind of give you a red flag of what's going on, officer, if you want to start. Yeah, I, I, let me go a quick back and forth, Steve. I don't know what the European measures are, but one of the things I said to Steve in the pre-show, and when we do these side effects, you'll notice that this actually comes up. One of the reasons why, I mean, there's a whole receptor thing, Steve, but that's bordered on pseudoscience. So more common and more obvious would be in terms of the response that Steve referred to. Uh, one person can have issues at 50 and someone else can be fine at 40 and vice versa is typically down to the condition of the individual. And basically, what does that mean? In, in, in brutally uh, layman's terms, the fatter you are, the more likely you are to have issues. And the higher the number with you being fatter, the more likely you are to have issues. So in other words, and we say this quite often, Steve, you know I do a show, your results almost certainly will be better on any cycle, and this includes issues with estrogen, if you are lean when you start the cycle. That doesn't mean sub 5% body fat. It just means relatively lean, 10, 11, 12, 14, maybe even 
And if you're 20%, 25% and you use the steroids, we straight away tell you you really should be leaner. But specifically in this example, your estrogen issues, such as they are, are more likely to be, occur the fatter you are, the higher percentage of body fat that you carry. That's kind of obvious, but it's sometimes people are under the impression that they're going to get leaner because they're on steroids. But if you're already fat, you're setting yourself up to have that as an issue straight away rather than getting lean, then starting a cycle and negating some of the issues that you might possibly get. Let's start with number one, Stephen. This is just literally, I mean, the obvious thing, and we'll touch on this briefly as well, guys. So the, the thing that people grab straight away when you're talking about high estrogen is the idea of uh, gyno or gyno, I'll say it's probably Steve, gynecomastia. Right, so what do we took them? I'll, I'll, I'll to, to use the slang, Steve, bitch tits, man boots. And again, way more likely to happen when you have a higher percentage of body fat. And the last thing you need, and we have actually seen this, even with open level and Mr. Olympia type physiques on stage, is an, a muscular freak, an abomination of muscle standing in front of you. And yet at certain angles, the nipple is pronounced. And that's with a really, really low body fat. Uh, Fight Club, the movie, had the whole thing with one of the characters who'd taken steroids back in the day, and you've got the Brad Pitt character in the mix, and they're having one of his meetings and whatever, and, and one of the characters is literally crying, his estrogen is out the window, and, you know, he's, he's moving his moves, his man boobs around on camera, Steve. And the last thing we want to do is have that as an issue. We're literally trying to, quote, unquote, masculinize our physique, become uber-muscular and uber-masculine, in appearance, and yet here we are with essentially the female hormone kicking off. Now, one of the problems, and this is to do something to do with ratios, but I'll let Steve expand on this as well, is it doesn't actually directly happen specifically as a cause of steroid use as such. It's the back and forth of the hormonal imbalances. It, explain that a little bit better than I am, Steve, before we move on to the next one. Go. Yeah, so as I, I'll do this. As I said earlier on, guys, Basically, the, the phrase that we use sometimes is a hormonal roller coaster, and the body wants to have the ratios. And I mentioned the ratio earlier on, Steve, as you know, in men of nine parts testosterone to one part estrogen. Now, imagine that you inject 500 milligrams of testosterone. Steve used the number earlier on, and when he said it earlier on, I actually think that's kind of normal levels. So we said in previous shows that the, your body produces about 100 milligrams, there or thereabouts, Steve, per week. Okay, so again, remember that number that I just told you, 100 milligrams, and we're using the ratio that I said earlier under nine to one. Okay, so now I'm going to put in just as a normal test stack that we've talked about a million times on various forums and podcasts or whatever, 500 milligrams. So literally five times what my body produces. The body doesn't like that, and the body wants to come back and, and, and literally try to get that hormonal balance. So it's going to raise estrogen to try to balance back to nine, nine to one, as I explained earlier on. But I'm, I'm using the equivalent of 45, I think, off the top of my head, Steve, to one. So naturally, my, my body tries to produce that nine to one ratio and bring, brings the estrogen numbers up. And of course, as we talked about before, whether it's poor diet or cardio or conditioning or high percentage of body fat, and of course, your sensitivity, your own literal individual response, the same reason why doctors might need to vary the prescription drugs they've given you in hospital or over the counter from a chemist or pharmacy because your body responds ever so slightly. The idea, Steve, for example, that, you know, most of us could take a 200 milligram tablet of ibuprofen and the headache goes away, but one or two individuals might need to take twice that dose. Again, individual response. But obviously, again, when it comes to bodybuilding, we're not looking to have these kind of issues. So it's, it's, it's trying to manage it, but again, without completely suppressing it, but equally the reason we're having that much testosterone the way, is the anabolic response and growing and getting bigger, et cetera, et cetera. But we don't want the estrogen catching up. We don't want a ratio to go back to what it was normally, but equally, we don't want to completely remove it. Let's move on to the next one, Steve. I'll start this one as well. And this is from the Mayo Clinic, and we're talking about stroke risk. And again, what they've done here with the statistics, Steve, is that they looked at the great big group of individuals, nearly 2,200, uh, quite older, so that that was an issue right there, Steve, 70, 71 to 93 in a particular group in question, and they looked at making adjustments for hypertension, diabetes, and other bits and pieces, including, uh, as I've mentioned earlier, one percentage of body fat, and found that those with a higher blood level of 
and I'll try to say this correctly, Steve, estradiol, which is one of the indicators for estrogen, had a 2.2-fold greater risk of stroke compared to those whose levels were lower. And quite simply, again, it, old men tend to be skinny, very rarely big and fat, but they will have a higher percentage of body fat, say, for example, to someone who's male and 35, uh, certainly compared to people that train and so on and so forth. So it's one of those things where, again, this was literally comparing an indicator for estrogen in the body, and when it was higher, they had a greater uh, risk uh, for a stroke. So move on to the next one, Steve, in terms of heart health. Yeah, and when it comes to heart disease, it's a very good chance that most people who suffer from heart disease also have high estrogen, and, or estrogen is hurting them in the process. And all that has to do with the foods they're eating, their lifestyle, and all that stuff as well. So then, you know, let's go back to gynecomastia a little bit. Um, gynecomastia, a lot of people don't understand what that is. Maybe the language barrier, maybe people don't know that term, but that's that's a term for bitch tits. And it's a very serious problem. Um, and, and the thing with it is that um, in men, even teenagers can get this because as a teenager, your hormones are changing, your estrogen and your hormones are going all over the place. So teenagers even end up with this. It's absolutely horrible. I can remember in PE, you know, when we we're changing in the locker room, there was a kid with, with, with gyno. He would be too ashamed to change in front of the other kids so he didn't have to go to the bathroom and change. And it's really, really embarrassing to have those floppy tits, you know, as a teenager. Mm -hmm. Obviously, it's not really attractive to women unless they're into that. I don't know. But here's the thing. As, when you use anabolic steroids, this is a, a very possible thing. And here's the thing. Once you get it, you have two options. You can either just stop everything and hope it goes away. Option two is run an anti gynecomastia stack. You can come on the forum and learn about that. It's going to be a combination of Nova and Letro. And then the third option is you can have surgery and you don't want to end up with surgery. So the best solution for gynecomastia, as I always say, is don't get it in the first place. Go ahead, Lobster. Yeah, something Steve and I talked about the other day when we were talking about gyno, we are hammering the point too much. As we, I said, literally, Steve asked me if I knew someone that had gyno and had the operation. So I'll touch on that, Steve, for a minute. Uh, the answer is yes. Um, it comes up very rarely on the forums, but it has come up. A, a, our local gym owner competed pre-COVID, so 2018, 2019, Steve, in a regional qualifier, got on stage. Our a local, as was still then, IFBB Pro, was sitting in the audience, and he says, how do you think I got on? He says, you're going you're, you're gonna to place, but you won't win. And this is why he says, under the lights, as opposed to the gym lights, under the stage lights, I can see the tiniest cut of gyno. He says, and I'm telling you now, the judges will mark you down. He said, if it wasn't for that gyno, I'd have you first place. And in fact, that's exactly what happened, Steve. He ended up getting third. The winner of the class that I had you in front of me, but obviously he's not sitting in the judges line and looking up at, at my buddy. And he ended up having an operation. I believe he paid something like two to four thousand pounds in Poland. Uh, went very well, successful. In fact, he did. He just competed uh, a few weeks ago, Steve, and won his class. But yeah, definitely something that can hold you back. Some, and and in his, it's actually way, way more expensive in America, Steve. I think, well, we look at it in America, close to nine, ten thousand dollars $10,000. And that's relatively cheap. You can pay a lot more money than that just for the operation. Just what, it, what, what sort of prices are they paying for the operation in the States, Steve? Yeah, so you know when it comes to gyno, it just depends on your insurance company. It depends if you have insurance, but um, it depends on what doctor you use. But some of the best doctors, I mean, you're looking at, at you know five figures, you know. So it's going to be in the ten thousands, twelve thousand, fourteen thousand. If you want the high quality uh, surgery where it's not going to come back, I've heard horror stories of guys who spent several thousand dollars on gyno surgery. And then a few years later, it came back. So yeah, one of the yeah. things you have to keep in mind is it can come back if it's not done correctly and if it's not done thoroughly. So this is something we want to avoid completely. So you want to always Absolutely. keep your estrogen where it needs to be. Otherwise, you're running into trouble. Now, uh, the next couple, in erectile dysfunction, infertility, maybe, Mobster, you can explain what those are and uh, yeah. talk yeah. a little bit yeah. about them. So, so I'm, a, I'm a lot older than Steve and... Erectile dysfunction is a fact of life when you get older. Unfortunately, as Steve touched upon earlier on, with hormonal disruption, with chemicals, etc., in life, and so on and so forth, 
uh, it's become way more prevalent. It's something to do with our uh, uh, health condition, the obesity, again, that we talked about before earlier on. And of course, with the obesity, we've touched upon the idea of issues with estrogen. So essentially, it's getting hard on. Uh, or the ability to maintain a quality hard on. And um, unfortunately, whether you like it or not, guys, uh, young men arguably uh, talk about jokingly half tongue in cheek with the idea that if the wind changed, they would get hard on. They only had to see the outline of a woman, they get hard on. That doesn't happen when you get older. And it certainly doesn't happen to that level. So, of course, this explains the popularity of ED type drugs, like um, Cialis, Viagra, and so on and so forth. So, that, 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 that's part of that there. In terms of infertility, and again, actually, we touched upon this with the, the chemicals in, in life, in water, in the water table, in our soil that Steve talks about earlier on. And we've actually explained quite clearly on previous shows uh, that the, the reality is that science actually backs this up completely, Steve, as you know. And they've gone ahead and looked, and they said that your dad, your granddad, and your great-granddad had a higher sperm count than you do. Now, in 2024, as we record this show, and that is a fact of life. And that comes down to literally how we eat, the stresses, pollution around us, and so on and so forth. Now, of course, when we take steroids, the, the idea that it's going to affect your erection kind of feels weird. In fact, some guys, as you know, Steve, when on testosterone, absolutely fucking love it. They can't have sex enough. But again, if the estrogen's out of balance, it's, it's rearing its ugly head. Suddenly they go, hang on, the last cycle where I was shagging like it was going out of fashion, Steve Mobster, now I don't seem to have that thing. You go, what's changed? Have they got out of condition? Have they upped the amount they're on? Has there become an estrogen issue which there wasn't before? And again, the blood work that Steve referred to earlier on is a good example. Infertility, as I said earlier on, is literally going to come down to your ability to produce sperm. And what we are seeing, Steve, as you know, in, in, in modern science, certainly the last 15, 20 years, Way more people that are using PEDs are blasting and cruising. And whether they like at a younger age, never mind my age or your age, but certainly way more people are staying on and finding whether they like it or not that the fertility, their ability to literally produce sperm and have kids in men has gone right down almost next to nothing. Um, the chances, I mean, you know, the, the, let's say that you normally produce a million sperm uh, and you go off and get yourself checked, and you may even need to have IVF, et cetera, et cetera. Some, some guys are having like 10,000, Stephen. Most of those 10,000 aren't even useful in terms of the ability for them to go and fertilize an egg. So the longer you stay on, the more likely you are to have it. The, the higher that you have issues with estrogen, the more likely you are to become or have fertility issues, especially while you're on cycle. Now, as I said, sometimes the positive is amazing. Absolutely can't get enough. The missus wants to know what you're doing. Are you on steroids? Are you cycling right now? What the fuck? I'm in the kitchen trying to cook some dinner for fuck's sake, etc., etc. And it sounds like a great joke, but the reverse is horrendous. It's one thing to go back to your normal levels. It's something else entirely, Steve, as, you, as you'd understand, to go back to way less than before, and especially still having issues after a cycle's finished. So definitely, guys, these are things that we do not want to happen. We don't mind a little bit of a boost, but we don't mind going back to normal. What we don't want to do is go back on either of those two, Steve, to less than they were before. What do you think on those before we move on? Yeah, and we're going to touch on a couple of those things in a second. They're all kind of it's a domino effect. Like the next one, fatigue. It's a domino effect of everything that we've talked about. And some of the th other side effects we're going to talk about. Imagine you're holding water from high estrogen and you're having to carry gallons of water on your back all day. Of course, you're going to have lethargy. You're going to be fatigued you're going to feel more tired. So if you start noticing like in the middle of a cycle that your energy starts dropping and you feel poor, you're struggling. That could mean you have a lot of water retention from high estrogen, which is causing that. And then that can also tie into the next one, which is the increased libido. And Mobster touched on the stuff above. As you get older, your libido drops. Yeah. You know, and that's just normal. I mean, that's normal. And, but here's the thing like, if your libido starts dropping out of nowhere on a cycle, that could mean your estrogen got a little too hot versus, you know, other things going on in your body. And obviously, that could be an issue. And guys, I think guys realized that back in the day when they'd come off a cycle, this would happen a lot. They'd really crash during their post cycle, yes. because what yes. would happen is not only would their hormones drop their, their male hormones drop, but their estrogen would be high. 
So that combination made it very difficult on them. So this is why a lot of people back in the day really hated coming off steroids because they didn't have access to the PCT products we have today. Let me use myself as an example, Steve, and without being overly crude or whatever else, I had never had a high uh, effects when I'm on on a steroid stack, but I do notice a a small increase. It does. I don't go from normal to crazy. I go from normal to normal plus, so to speak, for for whatever that means in me. So I don't go like you know five, six, seven, eight times a day or anything daft. I'm not getting hard ons walking around the supermarket, that kind of thing. Uh, I don't think I had that when I was a kid, but I certainly notice a small increase. So for example, and to put it to put it slightly crudely, taking matters into your own hands, I wank on masturbation will increase uh, typically to twice a day when I'm on cycle, use the steroids, et cetera, et cetera. Equally, I know, for example, post-steroids, Steve, post-cycle, PCT, et cetera, et cetera, uh, both my nut size, which never shrinks right down because I don't use crazy dosages, will return to the normal size. Uh, and equally, uh, where my libido is, is back to normal. Normal for me is about once a day, whether I'm whether I'm actually, to put it again, crudely fucking, or whether I'm, I'm, I'm doing it myself. And that, for me, is on my normal level. Some guys will respond way more. And equally, it also depends on what the testosterone levels are like off cycle. If you're high T before the cycle and then you go into a cycle, it shouldn't change that much. If you're low T and then go into a cycle, it will change a lot. But as Steve said, it's all an indicator for us. If we have a cycle, Steve and I are running a cycle, or any of our listeners are running a cycle, and they suddenly note, notice the change, for example, when they're on testosterone and it's at this level, uh, uh, it's amazing, Steve, and the missus and I can't get enough. But hang on, the next cycle, as I said earlier on in the example that I gave, that isn't happening. Why is it not happening? Everything else is normal. I'm getting my sleep. I'm training well. I'm eating well. What's going on? And that's when we would talk about blood tests. That's when we want to know what your estrogen levels were. And also, again, if you've made any tiny little changes. So let's go on to the next one again, Steve. Uh, yeah. Changes in mood. That's an obvious example, Steve. And I just touched upon it a little bit. We mentioned in shows low T kind of guys. So again, with the chemical imbalances in life, etc. What you notice with a low T kind of person or a person who responds in that particular way to their normal testosterone levels is sometimes when they go on cycle, they become way more confident, way more outgoing, way more likely to chat up the girls and so on and so forth. And again, if that's the case and that's how they, re they, they respond every single cycle, the idea that you can change their mood, change how they feel, change for their little pep in their step, et cetera, et cetera, may be an indication that they've got estrogen issues. One more. So muscular atrophy, Steve, the idea is basically losing muscle. So typically, you're on cycle, you, you, you gain, and I've said this before, Steve, let's say an average four to five pounds of muscle, and the last two, three cycles have been exactly the same. You've done the same because it works. Your diet's on point. You're running a log on the forums. You're listening to the shows, and every single cycle to date has been four or five pounds of muscle. Halfway through a cycle, you start to notice that not only have you stopped, in fact, if anything, you've lost a couple of pounds. So the muscles have started to reduce. Your ability to not add muscle is non-existent. And in fact, if anything, you're losing muscle. So muscle atrophy. Move on to the next one, Steve. So this one is an imbalance, depression. And when there's an imbalance of male hormones versus estrogen, male hormones come down, estrogen goes up, you can go through depression. A lot of people complain about this during PCT. And yeah. this is very common. A lot of people in PCT, they get depressed. That's why they give up on PCT and then they just stay on. So it's very important when to go into PCT with your estrogen under control. You don't go into PCT with your estrogen high. Um, you know, a couple others, osteoporosis. This one is not really common um, in weight trainers because we have very strong bones from all the weight training we do. But if your estrogen yeah. consistently stays high year in, month in, and month out, like the people who run way too much TRT without an AI and they keep their estrogen elevated year round and they can over time definitely develop this condition. And, you know, we touched, we've touched on the next one, water retention a lot and water retention can indirectly or directly cause a lot of these side effects we talked about. So if you're noticing a lot of water retention, the moon face, the fluffy muscles, the, you know, where it just looks like you're retaining a lot of water, you're gaining a lot of weight, but it's not good weight. 
then there's yeah. a good chance that you've got water retention from high estrogen. And this is very, very common on cycle, especially with those who use a lot of gear um, and yeah. use a lot of aromatizing compounds, like people who use 500 or 700 or 8 or 1,000 milligrams a week of testosterone or use 50 milligrams a day of Dianabol. There's a good chance yeah. you're going to deal with water retention. And a lot of you like water retention, but it will come with side effects because of the estrogen issues and it, it will have a... No, pressure is an obvious one, Steve. When you're carrying excess weight, you don't need to carry, guys. So that's an obvious one. Hair loss. Uh, listen, guys, there are certain PEDs that we talk about on these shows where hair loss is an issue. And some of you younger guys, it's a major issue. Not so much for me. I don't care. But the idea that uh, estrogen is going to cause that particular problem, men and women. Men and women is sometimes played in society that women don't have hair problems. They do. And this is hormonal as much for the women as for the men. The last thing you want to do, guys, is come in and look an uber muscular, Greek god, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, and be losing your hair. And again, could be a great indicator. The weight gain that Steve referred to with the water retention, it, it can literally be not just water. Or, I mean, an obvious weight gain could be muscle, but that's not what we're talking about. It literally, you, you'll start to add body fat and water. So now you're carrying two kinds of excess. You're going to have more issues with blood pressure. You got, and of course, the, 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 the thing that helps here, Steve, and I touched upon this on the pre-show with Steve, is if you do add weight gain in the form of fat, you're actually going to get worse. So sometimes having high body fat is an indicator for you having estrogen issues. The other, it's, it's the other way around as well. If As you start to add body fat on cycle, your, any estrogen issues that you might have had already are going to get worse simply because you've got that high uh, 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 weight gain in the case of body fat. Specific Belly fat. What is the point again, guys? And this will be an issue, but an indicator again, where most of your body is muscular, but you're, and especially in men, of course, the lower part of the body is the one of the places that we're going to add it. You've got to the point where pri previously you were ripped, and now fat is starting to come back, and it's coming back in that one place that's a bastard to get rid of, and the one place that you don't really want it. And again, stage ready, looking re ready for the beach, looking ready for a photo shoot, and boom you're starting to add belly fat because of estrogen issues in that place that you don't want. The big one, Steve, I think, before we finish the rest of them, actually is one of the big ones. There's another really big one down here. Type 2 diabetes. So type 2 diabetes is incredibly prevalent in obesity or people that are obese, and especially now in modern society. And nine times out of ten, it's, it's, it's to do with lifestyle, poor, poor diet, not enough exercise, not enough fresh air, uh, and... and literally can be fixed in a great many individuals by training, by diet manipulation. But again, it's not just connected, ironically, Steve, here, with our use of uh, PEDs, but also some other medications that are given to treat you for uh, medical conditions that you might already have. Move on to the next one, Steve, which is a major, major one for, for men. Yeah, enlarged prostate, and this can become a major problem. If you have a high estrogen and you're using you know, uh, using anabolic steroids, your prostate can get enlarged and it can cause a lot of indirect and direct side effects like problems urinating and yep. it, it, you know, you're firing up a lot. Of, and this is the, the, the other one we want to talk about is cancer and yep. um, high estrogen has been absolutely proven to fire up cancer cells in the body as well as excess androgen. So if you're keeping your androgens and, and estrogen high year month in and month out, as I talked about earlier, yeah. It's really you're opening yourself to to cancer cells. We've seen autopsies of bodybuilders in their mid twenties who've gotten cut open and they found cancer in their system really growing that they didn't even know about. And it's because they had been abusing steroids since they were 16, 17, 18 years old. So they've been using steroids for five or 10 years. And that means they kept their androgens and estrogens uh, elevated. And the cancer is just, it's like, uh, it's like throwing gasoline on a bonfire. It's just going to blow it up. So you got to be careful of that. So let's touch on next, uh, Mobster, uh, Europharmacy's options uh, with anti-estrogens. Because here's the thing, <clears throat> this sounds really scary. We're not trying to scare you. We're just trying to give you the facts. That's what we do on yeah. this podcast. We don't try to scare. We don't try to preach. We try to educate. And this list of issues that we just went through, they can easily be under control. We have hundreds of guys and gals on the forum, specifically guys, because that's what this podcast really is um, you know, concerned with, that are doing logs. 
and they don't have estrogen problems because they're using the proper ancillaries, they're using the proper anti-estrogens and AIs, and they're keeping their estrogen under control, so they're running a smooth cycle. So it doesn't have to be something to be scared of. No, you just have to do the right thing. So what sometimes happens is people have got an issue, and they come on and ask us about it, and this is, again... Because they, they've, they've missed out on listening to the show like this, because they're not running a log like Steve says on the forum, because he literally would say, well, I'm about to, to a cycle, I'm about to start, and we go, okay, where's your AI? You haven't mentioned your AI. Make sure you've got one of these products at least on hand, although, as I said, I, pre I would prefer people to run it from day one. And, again, we can look at their physical condition, how lean they are when they started. And as Steve said, I can't recall one single example, certainly not the last two or three years, off the top of my head without looking where any of the, the people that are running logs and are properly prepared and properly researched have had any issues. What people will do is, of course, come onto the forums on occasion when an issue has happened, or can you can you tell me what my blood test results mean? And we will look and see that there's an issue in the blood test and they immediately say that. And a lot of it, what happens on the slightly and when it shouldn't happen, is, oh, my buddy says I didn't need an AI, or I've never needed an AI before. And I've even touched on this, Steve, you change as you get older your body may not be in the same condition it was before. And we would ask you these questions on the log and we would give you this advice. So again, it's definitely making sure those things are out there, Steve. I'll, I'll start with the first one here. And and uh, uh, Eurofarmacies has their own name for this. So it's a Rimidex and they call it Anastrolex. Uh, Anastrolex, I'll say this properly. This comes in a one milligram tablet, 50, 50 pills to the bag. And typical dosage, which are suggested by Eurofarmacists themselves, Steve, 0.25 milligrams to half a milligram every other day. So they're basically one quarter to one half of a tablet. So that's quite simple. You let, let you do the next one, Steve. So next one is the most popular AI in modern times. And uh, this is uh, Exemestane in uh, Europharmacies calls it Exemestanex. That's their name for it. Comes in 20 milligram, a tab, 50 pills. And listen, let me tell you something. Aromacin is, a, is the most modern AI on earth. It does a lot of good things in the body. It's a suicide AI. And it's the only suicide AI that we're going to talk about. And that means it disables the estrogen enzyme from the, from the actual point. So you don't have to worry about estrogen rebound. It, does, it is possible to have estrogen rebound. Although it's not common, it is possible. So with Aromacin, it's the most ideal one to use as a gentle AI. And, you know, we're going to go over the dosing to start with. But again, it's up to you all out there to adjust the dosing depending on your cycle. You know, so if you're using 100 milligrams a week of testosterone and then using a DHT with it, you're not going to need an AI. But if you're using 500 milligrams a week of testosterone with DBOL, you will definitely need an AI. You see? So the dosing is going to make a difference. And if you're doing 250 tests and a, a DHT, you may need just a little bit of an AI. Because you don't want to slam your estrogen either. So it's important when we go over the dosing, you've got to adjust them. Everybody's a little different when it comes to this. So Let me ask you a question there, Steve, although I was a listener, and we've seen this on the forums. So someone comes on, they posted the cycle that they're on. We've got a good idea of their physical condition. And we know that we're taking, for example, and I use a Rimidex again as an example, we know they're taking a quarter of a milligram a day. We will sometimes suggest, and I'll have Steve jump in here as well if need be, the idea is, for, well, how much more should I take? Because we're already using it. Right? We, we, we're trusting the source. We know it's a good product they're using. So, for example, and I'm, I mentioned earlier on that, 0 0.25 to half a milligram, so 0 0.5 milligrams per day. Well, sorry, every other day. It's literally tweaking it up a tiny little bit. It may, for example, be that if we were talking about something, we said it was uh, every other day, they might need to take a very small amount every day. It, we're not talking about doubling. We're not talking about multiple times per day. We're not We're not suddenly saying you need to use a product that's literally once or twice a week. Now you can use it every single day. It is literally taking that up a tiny little bit, a quarter of a milligram in this example, Steve. So explain to the listeners a little bit about that before we move on to the next two. Yeah, and, and yeah, like I said, really it boils down to blood work and it boils down to kind of looking at The thing is the estrogen is very sneaky. By the time you have like a lot of these side effects that we went through, a lot of them may not be noticeable um, until it gets bad. So it's important to cover your bases from day one. And you got to remember, as soon as you take that devil, it goes in your system. As soon as you take that testosterone, it goes in your system and it starts aromatizing into estrogen. So it's better to start from day one 
um, if you're going to run a cycle that's going to have estrogen possibilities. So, yes. so when it comes to aromasin, you know, 10 to 12 and a half milligrams, two or three times a week, if you're doing a normal 500 milligram a week testosterone cycle, for example, but again, adjust it up or down as needed. Uh, the next one is going to be letrozole. And letrozole, they call it letrozolexin. And letro is one of the most powerful AIs out there. Even though it's not a suicide AI, it's still extremely powerful in the body. And at the end of the day, I would only mess with letro if you have gyno. Like if you develop gyno or you develop high estrogen, then go ahead and use the letro. That's what it's for. And it comes in 2.5 milligram per tab, which is a very tiny milligram. And that tells you how powerful this stuff is. Um, and it's very, very powerful. Very, very powerful. Aruminase only comes in one milligram a tab, so it's even more powerful. But, but Aruminase is more gentle. So don't use Letro. A lot, of, a lot of the old school guys you'll see out there who are running their mouth, they don't know shit. It's because back in their day, Letro was the first AI they had access to. So to them... Yes. Especially yes. like in the 90s, yeah, they had access to it. So they think that today, yeah, this is 2024. We should still be using Electro. No, today we should be using Aromasin or Arimidex. Well, Aromasin is preferred as your AI. Electro, have it on hand just in case, but don't use it un unless it's absolutely necessary. So that's how we use it. And the next one is tamoxifen and they call it tamotex which is novadex and it comes in 20 milligram a tam 50 pills now with this one novadex is not an ai so it's not no. the same thing as the other three it's a serm selective estrogen receptor modulator and with this one you know again we go back to the old guys as mobster said earlier in the late 80s 90s guys were using novadex on yeah, cycle this was because it. there was nothing else there was nothing else they didn't know yeah. about other AIs yet and aromasin didn't even come out yet. So no. this is what they use and it worked sort of. Okay. It worked good enough because what the way a serm works, it's not like the AI. The AI will disable the estrogen enzyme. Well the Novadex will actually block estrogen from feedbacking. So by doing that, you really open yourself out to estrogen rebound and also it doesn't work as efficiently as just disabling the, the damn enzyme to the, in the first place, right? So it'd be like putting up a wall. Like let's say there's a war and you put up a wall to block the people from getting in to your city that are trying to invade your city. But the AIs actually will pick them up. The, they're like dropping little rockets on 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 them before they even get mm -hmm. to the wall. But but the Novadex is like having just the wall. So eventually what's going to happen, they're going to climb the wall, they're going to climb the wall, and they're eventually going to spill over or they're going to bust through the wall or something. And you'll end up with a bigger problem than you had before. But this is something they use out of necessity. But here's the thing, the Novadex and the Letro together are a great way to combat gyno. If it's an emergency situation and you need it Yes, because yes. now you're not only picking them off, but you're also building that wall at the same time. So they kind of work in synergy together. So that would be the reason you use Novadex on cycle, but typically you want to use it, save it for PCT because it helps manipulate the pituitary glands into producing hormones. So that's, that's what you want. It's not going to help you on cycle when it comes to that. So, Mobster, you know, we have a few minutes left. Why don't you touch, start talking, to, touch on that a little bit. and then Yeah, so listen, guys, let me expand on something that I, I did earlier on in the show. And specifically this, right? You will not know. Let's imagine that you've never done any steroids before. You're not going to know how you respond. You're not going to know whether or not you may or may not have AI issues. Experienced users tend to be able to say, uh, I ran a cycle before, I didn't use an AI, I didn't have any issues. But I've actually argued back and forth because I said the condition that the individual had then, the age when they did the life cycle and so on and so forth, is not necessarily the same now. So you still need to know. You definitely won't know at all if you've never run a cycle before at, for example, a specific dose, but especially if you've never used any kind of steroid before, how you're going to respond. So the, the idea that you... And, the worst case example, Steve, is someone that suddenly starts to have issues that's never had issues before, and they don't have an AI on hand. 
they're going to kind of start panicking. We've seen this. And the last thing you want to be doing is running a cycle, training your ass off, eating meal prep food, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, and kind of panicking that you can't get hold of an AI, kind of panicking uh, that I'm having this particular issue. And, of course, literally that kind of stress just makes it worse, team. <laughs> stress is one of those things that's going to mess with your head, it's going to mess with your body, the cortisol is going to increase, and so on and so forth. And what we're trying to, all of us, every single person that's listening to this show is absolutely wanting to have the best possible results. So when we say have an AI in hand, we mean it. If you, Please have it on hand, even if you've never had issues in the past. Like Steve says, you don't ever really want to be in that situation where you need to have letrozole uh, because the, a, a problem's already occurred, and then using that when you could use some, a, a slightly milder effect on your body, having, again, tweaking the dosages, that's what you come onto the forums for. I will touch upon also, Steve, something else that we talk about when we do these kind of shows. I have used, and in fact, I would actually think I've got some uh, aromas in here, Steve, from, from Euro Pharmacies. So one of the things that we always like to talk about when we do these shows is using a company's product that we trust. I think this is especially true, Steve, when we're talking about managing estrogen and especially if we're having any particular issues with estrogen on cycle. The apps, this sometimes happens as well, guys, is that they we a, a member will come onto the forum, they've used a different source, they assumed that the product that they were using, and I'm not talking about an aromatizing inhibitor, I'm talking about steroids, was what it said on the label, and it isn't. And that's another reason why some people have run into problems. So what you definitely want to be doing in that situation, Steve, is using a trusted source that has exactly what you need. And in this case, is actually what it says on the label because you are having issues, issues you are having problems in the cycle, you are starting to see uh, issues with blood pressure and water retention, and it worse, the, the, the beginnings of what might become gyno. And what you don't want to be doing is messing around with a company where they've over underdosed a product, overdosed, it doesn't do anything at all, and so on and so forth. So you want a, a company like Euro Pharmacies because they're trustworthy, because you've used their product in the past, because you know that they get their products tested, because feedback from other users of Euro Pharmacies, aromatized inhibitors, has told you that you can trust their products to do what they're supposed to do. And whether you run an AI from the beginning or you are using an AI now because you've seen any problems. Talk about your experience with Euro Pharmacies, and especially when it comes to AIs as well, Steve, before we finish off. Yeah, and the days of, you know, sources just selling you steroids, the guy in the back with the white van behind the gym, all he has is the steroids. All he has is the test. Or yeah, they never, they never had estrogen stuff. Yeah. They never had so the you, AI. So you take what he gave you, and then you end up with gyno. So what's the point of doing that? Those days are long gone. Today, brands are expected to be one-stop shops. You're going to sell me testosterone. You're going to sell me estrogen, which is going to convert into estrogen in my body. You're also going to have available good quality AIs that I can take to alleviate the situation. It seems like common sense, but you'd yes. be surprised. People out there, a lot of times, they don't have common sense. So it's very, very important to have a brand like your pharmacies that we can trust. Another thing that was happening 20 years ago or 15 years ago, Mobster, is sources yeah. would have good quality gear, but then shitty ancillaries that didn't work. So then people yeah. would be taking their aromasin from day one and still end up with gyno, still end up with estrogen problems because the ancillary was no good. And the steroid was good. It was dosed properly, but the ancillary yeah, that's, that's, was that's Steve, just sorry to interrupt you, but that's, that's literally what they thought sold. They, they, the guy at the, with the trunk and the bag in the trunk and the car didn't care if you got AI, he just wants to sell you drugs. The, the lab, the, the source, wants to sell you good solid testosterone. They want you to come back. You've got great results. You've got stronger, more muscular. But in their mind, unfortunately, at that particular time, and it has changed, all our approved sources are way better than this, way better, would be that they wanted to sell you solid testosterone. They wanted you to gain muscle, and they wanted you to repeat customer. But what they didn't do was focus, as Steve says, on the ancillaries. They wasn't providing you with all the other things you need. You still can't buy, well, they're very easy to get, Amazon and eBay, the, the needles and the syringes for various reasons. And it, as I said, Amazon and eBay, no problem whatsoever. A bunch of medical companies are sending absolutely no issue. That's the main reason why UGLs don't cover it. But they do have way better ancillaries than they ever had before. They've obviously expanded their ranges to other products. They just literally didn't think to focus as heavily. They were, they were users. They were training... 
they were using steroids. I want to sell these steroids on the internet. I want people to get great results like I've had. We're going to produce these products, but it never occurred to them. Obviously, people then started to come back and say, can you provide this for us as well? And so all of our sources provide great ancillaries, don't they, Steve? Yeah, definitely. And you're a pharmacies, you can trust their Aromacin, you can trust their Electro, their Nova. If you ever get in the pinch or you're using a, a different a brand and you get in a pinch and you start developing gyno, you start noticing it coming on. You start noticing uh, the tenderness in the breast and stuff like that, or you end up, end up with like a lot of water retention. You need a pinch. You can go to your pharmacies and order their Electro and their Novodex and get that taken care of right away. You can order their Aromacin, be confident that it is good quality, or their Arimidex. So this is very important when it comes to not just the steroids you're using, but also your ancillaries. So if, if that's not going to be the case, then you can't use steroids. This is why I tell people all the time, they want to use steroids. Like, well, I can't find an AI in my country or I can't do blood work in my <laughs> yeah. country yeah. or something. Look, yeah. if you can't get blood work done and you can't find an AI, then don't use steroids until you can. It's as simple as yeah. that. Or pay the money to fly to a different country yes. to get it done. I don't know what to tell you. You know, it's not that. It, you know, we, you're going to turn a big deal into nothing. So it's important to always have this stuff on hand so yes. trust your pharmacies. Yeah, I'd rather have it on hand and not need it, Steve, than, than, than need it and not have it on hand. It makes no sense to me. It's a bit like having house insurance. God damn it, I don't want the house to fall down, burn down, but I don't want to pay for insurance. But I've got to have it. So this is the same thing. It's one of those things we don't want to need, but we if we do need it, we want to have it and it's ready. Definitely come onto the forums, guys. Ask the right questions like we've just explained. Talk about the differences. Let people know about the dosages that you've used when you've had problems, how you sorted those problems out, and especially the medical stuff that we covered earlier on. We'd be interested to hear what your thoughts were on that subject. Please note, we are not doctors and opinions are ours. It is our view and based on our experience and views on the topic, a podcast of informational purposes and entertainment only, the freedom of speech and the First Amendment applies.